Good morning, hockey fans. This is Stephen Heisler with HeisHockey.com, the Junior Hockey Discussion Group on Facebook, and the Victoria's Hockey Company. This is the Junior Hockey Morning Show. We are on the World Sports Broadcasting Network, WSBN.TV. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, maybe in your car, maybe on your phone, maybe you're watching this three days from now. Today is Tuesday, March 14th for you. We are still Monday night. Tommy booked me a very early trip in the morning, so I'll be staying up tonight doing that trip and then sleeping for a couple hours tomorrow because he's a really nice kid and he abuses me on a regular basis. Please call the animal control office. Take him out of here. <clears throat> today's article or today's topic, we're going to go over the North American Hockey League's East Division. Danbury ended their losing streak in Boston while Maryland continues to do just enough to hold off New Jersey in their quest for the division title. There may be some jockeying around for positioning between second and fourth place, but it looks like the top four teams will be advancing to the playoffs unless Johnstown pulls a late-season miracle. Let's talk about Maryland Black Bears first. They are 33-14-4 with 70 points. Clint Milock's Bears split the road series at New Jersey and remain seven points in front of the Titans in the hunt for the division title. Seven of the last games, seven of the last nine games are all at home at Piney Orchid Ice Arena. Johnstown is in town this week for three games starting Friday. I think this is not the way Coach Mylock wants to go into the playoffs, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. But it's working, and they're staying ahead of the pack. You have to be concerned about the level of intensity. But, you know, what? they're getting the job done, and that's all you can ask for. Um, I don't know if what's happening in the East Division and how it's going to end up is going to pair well with what happens in the Midwest or the South or the Central Division. But last year, New Jersey proved that they can overcome the mess that's in the East, um, the lesser games, the less competitive environment, and they managed to win the whole thing. So maybe Maryland or New Jersey or one of these guys can do the same thing and follow what Jersey did last year. It could be the Titans. They have been known to play good hockey this year on occasion, except when they play against Philadelphia. Speaking of the Titans, 30-16, 1-2, 63 points, 7 points behind Maryland, and 2 points ahead of Maine. Craig Dormis' Titans failed to capitalize on the opportunity to gain a bit of ground on first place Maryland over the weekend, splitting the two games with the division leaders. New Jersey's loss on Saturday allowed the Nordiques to close that gap between the two clubs to just 2 points. Going into this weekend, the Titans visit the Generals, another team gunning for playoff positioning. Again, I like Jersey. I like their program. I like their staff. This has been a kind of a strange year for them. They started out kind of rough. They got really hot. But what I'm seeing lately, I have to you know question what's going on. Losing to Philadelphia and back-to-back -back games, midweek games, whatever that was, was not was not pretty. The third team is the Maine Nordiques, 29, 17, 2 and 1, 61 points, just two points behind New Jersey. Pinch and the Nordiques took care of business in Philadelphia, earning a road sweep over the Rebels. The result moved Maine to within two points of currently second place New Jersey. The Nords visit Danbury this weekend and should be concerned with the hat trick's shocking road win over the Generals. With four of the 11 games remaining being at home against Jersey, Maine certainly has the opportunity to overtake the Titans. Again, that's going to be epic. How Jersey handles Maine four more games before the end of the season in Maine at the Coliseum. There won't be anybody watching the games there, but the level of play should be good. I think Jersey will persevere. 
The 14 Northeast Generals, 27, 19, 4 and 1, 59 points. And again, they are two points behind Maine, sitting in number four spot. Brian Erickson's Generals were crushed 5 2 by the Hat Tricks on Saturday, allowing the visitors to celebrate the end of a 30 game, 37 game losing streak on Generals Ice. Yes, the Gens took two of three games in the home series, but the damage from Saturday is already done. New Jersey visits the village this weekend. Another epic val- uh, battle. Generals can fight to gain ground in the division with the wins over the Titans, but I don't see that happening. I think the Titans are going to buckle down, and this will be a, a pretty good series. Number five, Johnstown Tomahawks. 23, 23, and 1, 50 points. No team in the North American Hockey League has played less games, 47, than Mike Letiza's Tomahawks. That means that Johnson, Johnstown almost has enough games in hand to jump ahead of fourth place Northeast Generals. For that to be a reality, the boys had better pack hard hats and lunch buckets for this weekend's trio of games at division leading Maryland. We've seen Johnstown pull off some serious moves in late season in the past. They certainly have the guns to make a run. They have the time. They have a lot of games left. Um, Can they pick up two of three at Maryland this weekend? That's really what it's going to take for them to be in serious contention to make a run at the Generals. Number six, Philadelphia Rebels, 23-25-1-1. 48 points, just two points behind Johnstown. Justin Hale and the Rebels will almost need a miracle to jump into the play, division's playoff pitcher. The reality is that just getting to 500 would be something worth celebrating. Philadelphia has this weekend off before venturing to Johnstown for three games, March 24-26. Philadelphia could fight their way back in. It's highly unlikely. Maybe it's impossible. What remains to be seen. Danbury hat tricks. Three, 43, five, and two. You know, I think Philadelphia might be mathematically eliminated. I don't see how they can really do this. 48 to 59. They're 11 points out. Generals would have to tank. Um, we'll check on that tomorrow and let you know. It would take a miracle for Don Sure. Let's go to Danbury Hattricks 3, 43, 5, and 2. They are out of it. Patrick Stefan and the Tricksters knocked that big monkey off their back, ending the 37 game winless streak with that 5 2 win at Boston. Losing two or three road games becomes something to celebrate with the season Danbury has endured. Maine visits this week. I wonder if Danbury can do that and, and do something against Maine over the weekend. Be an absolute spoiler in this division. Let's talk about the expansion sisters. God, these people hate me for saying that. Rochester Junior Americans. I'm sure that the named head coach general manager is a fantastic guy. But what does this Frenchman know about getting players to NCAA hockey at either division? or what it takes to be successful in the North American Hockey League. Oh, boy. What is it going to take for these fools to figure out that experience is necessary? They keep naming all these NHL guys. They bring the the AHL experienced player, and he played in Germany, and that was nice. But does this coach know what it takes to be successful in this league? No, he has no idea. And that's concerning. We can be facing another situation where the coach thinks he knows it all, much like Colorado. And and the fact is, he really doesn't. At least the Colorado coach has been coaching junior hockey. This kid doesn't seem to have any coaching experience outside the youth level. Let's talk about New Hampshire for a second. The league has not announced this team yet. But... New Hampshire Hockey Hall of Famer Chris Brown is rumored to be the owner of the new NHL team to be based at Tri-Town Arena in Hookset. Hope I got that one right. Brown is the founder of Black Ice Pond Hockey Tournament that has been played since 2001 at White Park. 
Let's hope that this gentleman does a better job of picking the staff than what Colorado and Rochester has done. Here's a name that would shake a few trees, Sean Trombley. That would be an excellent cho choice to come in and be the head coach of that team. He's familiar with the New Hampshire market. He's been very, very successful there in the past. You know what? He got a little bit of a run in with his boss down there in the non-sanctioned league. And getting back to New Hampshire, maybe just what the doctor ordered. He's a fantastic coach. He's been coaching AAA. And maybe it's time to get back to the junior level and prove that you can coach or he could coach at the NEHL level. Of all the guys out there and it's available in New England, this guy makes the most sense. Yes, it's a step back. He's a bit old school. But that works in the North American Hockey League. Sometimes it takes that. Trombley would be a fantastic choice. Mr. Brown, if you're watching this, get a hold of Sean. He would do a good job for you. That's it for this morning, or tonight in my case.